Good morning, welcome, welcome to our online audience too. Good to have you all with us today. Uh, the snow just started to come down. Uh, so, uh, hey, come in and be warm. And if you're at home, turn your fireplace on. You know, it's funny, at our house, every uh, Christmas season, uh, during this season, they have a TV station with the fireplace on it. And we turn it on, and it feels like it warms up the room. I don't know, there's something to that? I'm not sure. Uh, but we want to welcome you. Glad that you are with us. Would you stand with me this morning? And uh, we're going to open our time together in prayer. And then we have our worship is all going to be uh, via video today. And so we want you just to sing along with us. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this amazing day that we can come together, lift high your name, the name of your Son, and just infuse us with joy and peace and love to honor your name uh, through your Spirit. May we be examples of uh, your love and grace and joy in our world. And we thank you that we can do that right here with our brothers and sisters and uh, those watching online, that we can pray and encourage one another, uh, and especially in this season where we think about your great gift that was given to us. And so we welcome you. We thank you for your grace towards us, and we pray your blessing uh, on our time now as we gather in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, let's sing together, and we're going to need your help today, but let's uh, do our best.
Father, we thank you for the great and amazing gift of your Son. We thank you that today there is no more powerful name, no more beautiful name, no more wonderful name than the name of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. And what an incredible gift that we have. And many of us have unwrapped this beautiful gift, the very person of Jesus, God in flesh, given to us. So today I pray for each one of us that maybe this is a year where we uh, unwrap again in a fresh way the gift of your love and grace. And maybe for some, this will be the first Sunday where they will hear of your grace, your good gift, and they will accept that gift and unwrap it. That's our prayer today, that every single person uh, would come to the saving grace of uh, love and truth found only in your name. So we give you praise and we thank you for your wonderful, amazing love. Amen. Amen. Hey, say hello to a neighbor. Help them warm up with all that snow outside. And welcome again to all of our online folks that are with us uh, today. Glad to have you uh, with us in house today. Amen. Amen. So good to have you all. Hopefully you're getting warm singing, <laughs> singing along with us. And I know Connor's not here today, but Vicky's grandson, Connor, turns 13 today. So if you see him somewhere in the next couple weeks or over Christmas, give him a high five. 13 years old, that's a long time ago for me. But anyway, uh, I want to just celebrate that. Some announcements for you uh, this morning. Here are our Christmas dates. Of course, we are here on the 11th uh, as it is. Let me move over a little bit for our online folks. Uh, the next two Sundays today and uh, next Sunday will be here. Then Saturday, December 24th, 6.30, one hour Christmas Eve service together. We'll be doing some reading. Uh, we'll be singing some carols together, celebrating together. Invite a friend. I've already said to Peter, all the chairs you can find. Right, Peter? We're going to put as many out as we can, so there'll be lots of room. I encourage you to bring a friend or neighbor to come and sing along with us and celebrate together on Christmas Eve. Then January 1st, we'll be back here. So Sunday morning, Christmas Day. Uh, you enjoy that with your families on your own, and join us online. There will be an online, uh, not live, but uh, just a little uh, hey from Pastor Jay and, and uh, sharing with you about God's blessing and uh, a little thought for you that morning. All right, so uh, those are our Christmas dates. We do have a hymn, hymn sing coming up next Sunday, December 18th, will be our hymn sing. You need to be there at 1.30 and then it starts at 2. So uh, that is a hymn sing at, our, at the seniors' home. I was going to say our seniors' home. We've kind of adopted it, really, Bridalwood Trails. Uh, so that will be next Sunday, uh, the 18th, uh, hymn sing there. And then there is a Christmas party at the Watsons. woo <laughs> They look very excited back there. They, we, they, uh, he, they called me and said, listen, we've got a big place here. We'd love to have everyone out. Just tell people to come. No need to bring anything. Please don't uh, feel that uh, you need to bring anything. But if you do have an extra pie you want to give to me, I'll take it home with me. Um, no, you can talk with the Watsons about that. But they just wanted to have us out as a church family. We haven't got to gather a whole lot. So this is an opportunity for you to do that. You can talk to them if you need directions. 7 p.m. Uh, December the 16th, all right? So uh, you're all invited to come and be a part of that, uh, do, sing some carols, and there's some treats and whatnot there. It's almost a great time. Uh, so if you are giving in the offering, I want to just say a quick thank you to all who have given towards Benevolent. If you did forget or would like to, you're still able to do that over Christmas. And then uh, our accounting software kind of tells us what the total is. But we've gone ahead in faith and we are blessing the families that we uh, had decided uh, needed that. And most of the money is there. So thank you for that. Um, but we are able to bless uh, three families and a couple others. And we're excited about that. And the way that you can do that is by going to our website. Up in the top corner has the donate button. Let me go this way. Uh, the donate button is there. And then there'll be a little message box where you can put on um, different things. Missions, benevolent, etc. All right. So that's how you do that. Or here in person. If you come in person, uh, even on Christmas Eve, you are welcome to see Sandy or you get or whoever's at our back welcome table. And they will. Uh, you can give in person as well. All right. Deb is coming again. She has an announcement for us because I'm not allowed to make this one. So you come on up. <laughs> Good morning. Like I said last week, awkward talking about him behind his back in front of his face. <laughs> so what I said last week, same thing. Go back and watch the message. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's that time of year again, Christmas time, where we show appreciation for the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, God's Son. 
But what we have to remember too is that there are those who shepherd us here on earth under the guidance of the great shepherd. And we would like to show our appreciation to Pastor Jay and his family once again this year. So today, if you want to designate a portion of your offering or a special offering, uh, please feel free to do so. In person, this is the last time I'm going to be asking in person, but please know that you can donate online or even next Sunday for that matter. Um, I'm going to ask that you do get your donations in for a pastor's love offering by the 22nd. If you could do that, that would be awesome. So remember, if you do donate online, then make sure that you write in the little box where it says message, just put love offering or pastor's offering. So either one will work. Okay, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Deb. Thanks so much. Yeah, and thank you in advance. I know the board every year, we have our board meeting early in December, and they kind of try, Pastor, can we have a moment to uh, have an announcement? <laughs> so it's, it'd be weird, right, to do that. But thank you in advance. Kids, I don't know, the Samur family is sick today, but we do have a, a one, and she gets Marsha all to herself. So awesome. So kids, we're going to let you go at this time, and have a great time. And uh, yeah, pray for the Samur family. They have five boys, and they uh, have, uh, he texted me and said, yeah, we're going to miss. Everybody is kind of down right now. So just let's pray for the s'mores. They might be watching online. Hey, guys, if you are, uh, praying for you guys that you get feeling better. Um, so we have been in this series, and I'm going to just sort of dive right into it. It started last Sunday, uh, looking at peace. And other years, we've gone through peace, joy, love, hope. This year in prayer, just really felt to focus in on peace itself. And sort of breaking into three uh, parts. So uh, we'll look at uh, presence today, the presence, and kind of a play on words there, uh, but spelled as presence, his presence. Um, but at Christmas, of course, uh, you know, we, we think about that. Uh, if you're like me, you've maybe made it out to a couple different places this week um, Costco or some other mall. I think I was at Tanger, which is half outdoors and half indoors. And uh, that's kind of an interesting uh, journey. And I went through and got the wrong size on something and had to go twice. So that was not a good move. Um, but anyway, it's interesting this time of year as we all look for presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E -E is that right? Yeah, uh, that's not what we're talking about today, all right? We're talking about uh, the peace that comes through Jesus' presence, the Father's presence in our lives. And I wanna dig into that with you today. And uh, as we do, though, I want to kind of highlight where we've gone, where we are, and where we're going. Last week, and you can, as, as Deb mentioned there, you can go back through our, either our website or through our YouTube and, uh, page, and you can see last week's sermon was on the promise. That prophetically, God spoke out that peace was coming and that his son was coming to bring peace and looked forward towards the cross and Christ coming and bringing peace into the world. And we look back to that cross and understand what Jesus did. But that promise has been fulfilled. And now this week we're looking at the actual presence of God that we get to experience through his spirit. Uh, that his spirit lives in us, the Bible says, that we can call out to him, we can read and pray, and as we've done, we can sing today and worship him. And he says that where two or three are gathered, there I am in their midst, that as we come together, he's here with us. And that's a great thought, to remember that he's with us and present with us. That, that's what we're going to dig into today. And then next week, the purpose. And if you're wondering, well, I think we get the purpose of peace. It's more the purpose, how can we be the purpose of Christ and the peace uh, in our lives extend to others. So how can we be that? How can we be those hands extended? How can we um, expand that purpose and find ours? So that'll be next week. A little bit of recap here too, that when we talk about peace, and this is important for today, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the word shalom, erene, and the basic meaning though, what we're looking at here is, is not our sort of um, surface level peace, that we had a good day, it was peaceful, the dog was good, the cat was good, the kids were good, you know, the, the, we had the TV fireplace on, it was quiet and peaceful. We're talking about a deep peace, uh, a peace that only really God can give here. And when the Bible talks about it, it's talking about completeness, wholeness, that peace is not really just this feeling or um, a set of circumstances that bring out some joy in our lives. It is this completeness 
That's really what God is after for us. This completeness, this wholeness, this healing, um, this bringing us back into relationship with him and celebrating that. So that's really, when we look today at his presence, that's what God is about. That is really the process of sanctification. He's working on us. He is changing us, uh, making us more and more like him. And, and uh, we take a couple steps forward and one or two back, and he keeps working on us. So we're all grateful for that. These were our points. So this, is, again, is still just a little bit of recap. But we talked about how his peace brings rejoicing, refining that sanctification process. There's a ruling of his peace that we need to follow his rule in our life and be obedient to his call for our to find our best purpose, and then we can rest in it. We can trust him. We can, we can know that his peace is enough, no matter what the circumstance might look at. So uh, there you go, last Sunday in a nutshell. And now where do we go from here? Well, we want to uh, look at the presence of his peace. So John 14. Now, this is funny. I looked off and look back at my sermons through the year, and I'm like... <laughs> God's had us in this text at least three times. Uh, at least I would say, okay, I feel like I'm now, but this is a different angle at it. We're specifically looking at God's peace. But we've been here and looked at this text, um, I think, two other times this year. This is our third. And it's amazing to me how with the Bible, you can, you find this, you can go to the Word of God and certain things, it's like God is highlighting them in that text. And then you read it a couple years later and God's highlighting a different piece. And you're going, wow, how have I not seen that? And it's just the way the spirit works, right? Certain things pop off the page. And uh, so for me, that, that was this text this week. So Jesus, to give you some context, he's speaking to the disciples. He is headed towards the cross. They're worried about that. They're, they're concerned about where he's going. He's telling them he's leaving. They're not sure what's happening. So he's giving them some instructions around the hard times ahead. All right? He says in verse 15, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Can you imagine just for a moment as we read this far into the text? I wonder what the disciples are thinking. As they're hearing Jesus say this, they're expecting him to be their leader, to lead Israel. Uh, they're not understanding fully that he's going to go to the cross and that his kingdom is not of this world. A lot of this is, and they're hearing some of these words, and I'm sure there's a bit of a, a stirring in their hearts of what is he saying? How does this work with what he has uh, you know, already shown us? And then he says in verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I, too, will love them and show myself to them. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them, make our home with them. And anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. And then uh, he makes this statement, all this I have spoken while still with you. I could almost hear the breaks happen there as the disciples say, he is leaving. He's saying, he's speaking this well, he's with us, he's going somewhere. So wait, what's going on? But when the advocate, we know this to be the Holy Spirit, when the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he's going to teach you all things. He will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace, look at this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you the way the world gives or as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. And so this is uh, not really a traditional uh, Christmas season text. Usually we'd be maybe talking about the shepherds and, or maybe about Mary and Joseph and looking at the story. And so it's a little bit of a different step this year to look at it. But Jesus here is telling the disciples, I'm going. And as I'm going, I'm going to give you peace. So they're in this tension. 
of like, okay, so he's leaving, but he's going to give us peace. And he's speaking about an advocate here or a helper or the Holy Spirit who, for them, they're trying to figure out, so how does that play into all of this? There's probably a lot of questions, a lot of concerns that they would have had. And so when we think about the presence of peace at Christmas, um, I want to dig into this truth and kind of just help us understand the value that we can have in his presence, knowing his presence. Um, There's been seasons in my life where I feel like God's distant, just being completely honest. And you think, God, where are you? And you might say, well, I've never felt that. Sure you have. David called out and said, where are you, Lord? Jesus, Father, why have you forsaken me? We, We can feel these moments, and that's human and natural to feel that. There's other moments that I cherish and love where I sense and know and feel his presence. You ever been in that place like just this warm blanket of his love and grace and it might be in the midst of worship or on a walk somewhere or as you watch a, your son or daughter or grandchild uh, come into the world or whatever other circumstances. <laughs> you know, Mike, maybe you're fishing. I don't know, whatever it might be. And God can be anywhere at any time and all of a sudden in his sovereignty have us experience his peace. Those are amazing moments. And when I think about those, I think, yeah, Lord, we want more of that. You know, one day we will uh, know the manifestation of his peace in every possible way. Now we walk through a world, right, it's murky at times. We get snowy days, good days, bad days. And, but the reality is that his presence, and I want you to hear this, his presence is always with you. Always, he says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. We may feel he is distant. We may feel he is close, but the reality, the truth, is that he is always, ever with his eyes on you. Always, ever present. I think actually my mind sometimes goes to uh, that uh, course. He's just as close as the mention of his name. And it's an older course that used to sing in the church that Jesus, just as close as the mention of his name. And that's a very true uh, reality for us. So let's look at this. So you know how I work. (laughs) I like to kind of put these into chunks for us. So the first one is here uh, in verses 15 um, and through to 17. There's this partnering piece with with God through Christ and through his spirit that we get to uh, be partakers of. And look what is highlighted here. He says, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. I'm going to ask the Father and send you the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And he's going to help you. And look at this. Be with you. This is important forever. He is going to be with you. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you forever. He is a, if you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is a deposit within you. The word uses that, uh, the Bible uses that phrase, a deposit signifying that you are his son, you are his daughter, you are his forever. Your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life, not just the book of life, but the Lamb's book of life. Now you are his now forever. And he's given you his spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing that. And so we get to realize whether we feel like I said or not that he is always with us and then a little further down he says not only that but he lives with you and will be in you not just with you but in you uh, we had the uh, a fun weekend we got to uh, go down and see our son uh, and daughter-in-law in Peterborough and it's our first time going down there to see their little place and uh, so we drove down Heather and I together uh, left Thursday night just to kind of two days with them and then uh, made our way back last night and it was kind of fun to go down there and I'll just say you know when you if you have boys you know like with the girls they communicate very well boys not so great right and so it can be tough sometimes to know does he want us there does he not want us there are they busy are we interfering and so you know but we're gonna go we want to see their place and kind of bless them and love on them a bit so we get down there and we have a lot of you know uh, exciting talk Thursday night we go to bed I don't fit in the bed so that was a rough one um, but anyway uh, you know that's all good you know and then the next day and, and Rachel had to go off to work and we're sitting with her son in the living room and we're all we had a bit of work to do all of us so we're sitting there and the conversation comes up you know we didn't say it like this not like do you want us to leave <laughs> it was not the way we said it but we're like is it okay we're here and he's like oh I needed you guys to be here I missed you guys and we were like what that's amazing like it's, it's hard sometimes to know that you're thinking, okay, do you want us with you? You used to live with us. Now you don't. Um, now we're here. Is this okay? And he was like, this is great. I so needed this. And um, I was thinking, I didn't share this with Heather, but I was thinking on the, the way home of how 
you know, there's peace. There's comfort when we're with people that, you know, are family or friends or we connect with and we find strength with and we find encouragement with. And Jesus is saying here to his disciples and to us, I'm giving you my spirit, the spirit of truth. It's going to be with you to comfort you. Now live, look at that, be in you. His spirit living in us, empowering us, strengthening us, giving us joy and peace that the rest of the world goes, how can you be so peaceful? You go, it's, it's God, it's him. I, I don't have an explanation other than him. He's with me. And so wherever you're walking through this season, no matter what it looks like, maybe that job looks a little shaky. Maybe your health's been a little shaky, right? Maybe your uh, church family, ha- you, you feel isolated from and you feel like they, they, I don't know what series of events you're going through, but I want you to know that Jesus says, I'm going to be with you forever. And I'm going to bring a peace into your life. And it's a partnership. It's us looking to him, relying upon him. You know, the word of God says there's times where we are not faithful. And we all experience that. We're not faithful in our walk. We mess up. We say things, do things, act in a way that's disobedient. Hurt the heart of God. We ask for forgiveness. He forgives us. So often we can be unfaithful. Do you know what the word of God says? Though he will forever be faithful. Always and forever. It's his character. It's his nature. And so when he says here, I'm going to be with you forever. That's forever. That's His presence with you at all times. Feel it some days, don't feel it other days, but the reality, the truth I want you to know is that if you said yes to Him, He has partnered with you, His Spirit is in you. And He wants to know that that partnership is bringing you peace forever. And so I want that to be the first thing today that we realize about this peace, the peace of His presence. Psalm 23 says it this way, even though I walk through the the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Whatever is coming my way in 2023. I feel like, you know, it used to be, um, it's changed now in the last couple of years. But did you find the last couple of New Year's, it used to be in New Year's, oh, I'm going to do this and that and I've got plans for the New Year. And then we all know what hit and I won't say it because YouTube doesn't like, but you know what happened the last couple of years, right? That happened. And now people are like, maybe I'll be a little cautious about what I'm saying because I don't know what's going on, right? It's a little like up in the air. I mean, it's a little bit of a valley that's a little dark. We're not so sure. I got to say though, for me, thank you God that I can claim this verse. Don't, doesn't matter how dark that valley gets. He's with me. He's with me. And I want to make sure I'm with him. And so I encourage you today, if you're feeling this, this, like, I, where is God in this? And I'm feeling distant from him. Then take a step closer to him today. Get into the word. Get back to church. Get reconnected with the people who, who love the Lord. Find a place where you can reconnect with him. So Psalm, Psalms encourages us in that. Here's the second thing we see as we go on in the text in verse 18. That there's this pursuing piece. I like this. It's, it, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He's saying, I'm coming after you. Do you realize that? That God has his eyes on you? Sometimes we get it mixed up and we think, well, I'm the one who found him. I had to go searching for God. And I went to this church and that church and tried this and I tried that. And I couldn't find peace here or there. And I did meditation. I did all these different things. And I finally found him. He's coming after you. He's looking for you. He sent his son. John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for you. That whosoever will. And the word of God says uh, as well that all of creation declares his glory. So we are without excuse that he even declares it in the skies. As a matter of fact, we were driving back last night. Uh, I think we left around 3.30. And when we left, I said to Heather, oh, I like this. It's a little bit of uh, daylight. You know, as you get older, you want to drive in the daylight as much as you can. And so we're driving along, I think around Perth. It was getting pretty dark. And then as we're coming uh, uh, around a corner and the trees separated a bit, the moon had just come up. And when the moon just comes over the horizon, it's that bright orange color. And, uh, you know, I'm 50 years old. I'm like, what's that? Oh, right, it's the moon. <laughs> it's funny how it sort of surprises us. And just the glory of God on that journey. You look in the rear view mirror and we can see the red sky behind us and we can see the glory uh, of God's creation as the moon is coming up and just think, man, God, you are amazing. And all of these things... You are revealing yourself, your majesty to us. 
And you want to partner with us. You want, you come after us. You seek for a, a, a relationship with us. You want that. Remember Adam and Eve, if you think all the way back to the beginning, when they had fallen and partaken of the, the fruit and then hid themselves, it says he came walking and looking for them. Where are you? Where have you been? Think about Jesus through the Gospels as he asked questions of people, right? He said, well, I saw you under the tree or, you know, who do you say that I am? He's searching, seeking, looking for people, going from a well to a town to a living room, looking, looking, searching, searching. This is our God who is one who is pursuing us, coming after us. I love this pastor who was um, sharing his faith one time with a, a friend of his. And as he was sharing his faith uh, with the guy, the guy said, well, am I going to have to give up uh, all my partying? If I come to Jesus, you know, am I going to have to give up all the fun partying? He goes, no, you don't. But, you know, and he, he meant sort of the, the, ba- the bad side of partying. Let's put it that. And he goes, you don't, but you might want to. What about this? Am I going to have to give up this? And he'd list something. Oh, what about this? Am I going to have to give up this? And it was all sort of things that would, were not healthy in his life. He goes, no, you, you don't. You can just love to. But you're, you, you might eventually want to give it up. Why? Because he's in me. He's pursuing me. He's coming after me. He's changing me. He's transforming me. He's making me more like him. I would rather this life of following him than any other life that you could present to me of fame and money. And who are these influencers, by the way, that are online? Self-declared influencers. My kids are like, oh, they're an influencer. That's their job. What? Get a paper room. You know, like, what is going on? Like, you're an influencer? Who says you're an influencer? I didn't even know my kids have to show me. See that little red bubble there? You have followers. What? I have followers? Oh, no. Delete this app. I don't need that. You know, like, I, I just don't understand sometimes how we can, we can look and think that we need people who are, you know, who are following us and pursuing us and we're going to influence them. I just want to, I want to know God's coming after me and I can, I can, I can pursue him. He's with me in this. That, that gives me a peace. That gives me a peace to know what he's pursuing me. Look what he says a little further in this pursuit. He says, anyone who loves me, they're going to obey my teaching. My father will love them. We will come, look at this, we will come to them and make our home with them. That's Emmanuel. God with us. We're going to come to them. We're going to make our home in them. That's our God who's pursuing relationship with us. And it was funny, I mentioned there, Andrew and Rachel said, we, you know, we uh, stayed the first night in the spare room and the, and the bed was quite small and my feet were hanging over the end and it was like a hard wooden uh, bed rail. So I was having dreams that chickens were pecking at my ankles and I was like, I can't do a second night in this little bed. It's not going to work. And so as we were coming home the next night, I said, listen, I said, you have a nice big couch there. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to take the couch. No, no, take our bed. I said, no, no, I'm going to take the couch. I'm going to be fine on the couch. And I went on the couch with a pillow and a nice blanket. And Heather had the whole bed. She just loved that. Probably spread out. And it was all good. And I was on the couch. And it was great until their little dog, Rosie, who has some sort of nasal issue, decided to snore all night long and lick my hand if it went over the side of the couch. I'm like, God, it's like, leave me alone, you know, kind of thing. Not a lot of peace there, you know. Not a lot of, you know. Didn't fit, you know. And, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to going to make myself at home here. That bed doesn't work. I'm taking over your couch. You know, like, I'm going to make myself at home. And I'm a little hungry now. What do you got in the cupboards? You know, they've done that. Andrew did that all our lives. We bought chips. They were all gone. Now is my turn. Make your home. Right, Paul? Thank you. Got an amen over there. Thank you. Make yourself at home. I pray this way. I, God, make yourself at home here. Make yourself at home. And if there's stuff in my life that needs to be changed or moved or adjusted, show me what it is. Tell me. Make yourself at home. And you know what that'll do is it'll bring a peace. It'll bring this pursuing peace where all of a sudden he's pursuing you and guess what? You're pursuing him. You're going after him or you're saying, God, I need more input. I need your assistance. I need your help here. That's the kind of peace that Jesus brings. You see it here in Philippians 4, 6 and 8. Don't be anxious about anything. But and look at this, every situation, whatever you're facing by prayer, petition, thanksgiving, let those requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, basically kind of says, doesn't even make sense to the human mind how this can work, but this is how it works. It's going to guard your heart and mind. That it's not going to make sense to the rest of the world. They're going to say, how can you have peace in this situation with all the stuff going on in your life? You can say, yeah, I, other than Jesus, I don't have an explanation for you. 
He's the one who's made himself at home. He pursued me, and that's what made the difference. Here's another one. We've got four, and here's the third one. It's a productive piece. And I wrestled with this title. I thought, I don't know. This doesn't, is this really what I want? Even up to this morning as I was driving in, I was kind of praying and thinking about the, the, the word productive. But I, I think it really does fit here, and I'll explain. That Jesus says, whoever has my commands, keeps them. He's the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And look at this. I, too, will love them. And then he says, I'm going to show myself to them. He's going to reveal himself to us. When Jesus reveals himself to us, when he's walking, remember the series we did on walking in the spirit, when Jesus is revealing himself to us, he's saying, come on, follow me here. Follow me here. Help in this area. Assist in this area. Serve here. He's showing ourself, showing rather himself to us. That creates in our lives this peace that is productive, that is fruitful. Think of it that way right? There's this fruitfulness to our peace. It blesses other people. And I, I would even go so far as to say that, I, and I believe this with all my heart, and I, I can prove it scripturally, biblically, but as you and I walk into situations that are dark, the Word of God says we are salt, we are light, we are containers of the very Spirit of the living God. So as we walk into that situation, it should be transformed. It should feel a little bit of, uh-oh, you know? And I've told you this before, it's always funny when people find out you're a pastor and there's a lot of nonsense going on. They say, Jay, what do you do? I'm a pastor. Zoop. Goes quiet. You mean like a minister, like a reverend? Yep. Zoop. Quiet, right? Heads down. What do we do now? This is weird. You know, like it's often, well, it often gets weird for people, you know, like it, it, which is kind of fun to be honest sometimes. But, but I'm often just saying, God, show me what to say or what to do here or what not to say or what not to do. Like I, I need you to reveal yourself to me. And this piece, let it be let it produce something in the world that I'm in. Let people sense and know that peace. As I'm, may they sense and know and see something in me that's really just you shining through all the cracks in my life to, to be a blessing to them so that Jesus then can, can reveal himself to others through our lives. And, and I think that's a productive thing. That that peace isn't, hear me this way, it's not just a peace for me. It's a peace for me to share with others. It's a shalom, a completeness to invite other people to. And then as we as a church come together, I sense that. You know, I know many can't join us for different reasons, but I, I tell you what, as we come together, my heart's encouraged to see you all here. Be weird, just me and my camera. <laughs> Hi, everybody online. <laughs> you know, like, it's nice to have some people here. I would force my family, but other than them, it's nice, you know. But we want to be productive. We want to know that that peace is blessing our lives and the lives of others. All right. So, so I think that peace, that presence of Jesus also helps us be productive in that realm. And I'm actually going to talk more about that uh, next Sunday. Sorry, let me back up. This one goes with that. That we are productive because the Spirit does this. He teaches us and reminds us. It's part of this uh, third point still. That we're productive because it's the Holy Spirit who's producing peace through us. He's teaching us. He's reminding us what to say. He's telling us how to act, how to, right? And as he's doing that, we're being productive because hopefully we're being obedient. We're doing what he's saying. And then that peace flows through our lives to others. I, I am so excited sometimes when, you know, God will just kind of give me this word that's so clear and you share it with someone else and they grab hold of it and they, they say to you, wow, that just changed my week. And you go, oh, I wish that would happen more. Like, Lord, give me more of those moments. There's other times, have you ever had this happen? You share something with someone and they go away and you feel like, that fell flat. Well, I guess I missed on that one altogether. And years later, they might come back and say, do you remember 20 years ago or 15 years ago when you said this? That really affected me. And for years, I've been thinking about it. And you go, why didn't you tell me, right? But it's the Spirit who is going to work this, this fruitfulness in our lives. As we're obedient, as we're reminded and even, I would say that he teaches us when we're in situations that are dark, he reminds us, remember, I'm with you. Remember you've been down this valley before? Remember you've been across this river before? Remember I've, and I'm here with you, and we can handle this together, and my strength is sufficient for you, my grace sufficient for you. And so these are important things for us to remember to be productive in him. All right, so the last one that I can see in our text is going to be this one, and it's from verse 27 and through, but it's a persevering peace. And I want to spend just a little bit of time here as well. Jesus, at the end of it, this is what he says. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. This is the crux of everything I'm trying to say today. That I want his peace. I want his grace. I want his joy. I want what he can give uh, to my life to make me realize he's strong enough, he's able enough, he's wonderful enough, he's powerful enough. I want his peace. But then he says this, I don't give to you the way the world gives. And this week I dove into that a bit. I thought, what is, that's interesting that Jesus says, by the way, guys, I'm giving you my peace. This, this persevering peace, the word is everlasting peace. A peace that can never fade, can never perish, can never spoil. It's always going to be there. And when you dig into this, if you think about it for a moment, when he says, I do not give to you as the world gives, just think about it. How does the world give peace? If you and I start thinking about it for a moment, what does the world declare for peace? Well, they say, we're going to help you. We're going to give you a government that's going to bring peace. It doesn't usually work so well, right? Okay, well, maybe not a government. Well, then we'll just bring some laws your way, and these laws are going to help you. If you obey these laws, then we can all have peace. Okay, well, maybe that. All right, then we're going to get a military force together. We're either going to take your guns, or we're going to bring our own guns. <laughs> well, that was too far. Okay, so, you know, you know, we're going to do some things here, and that's going to bring peace. We'll get people with guns. Now we'll have peace. And it doesn't work so well. And then the money then, we'll just throw a lot of money at it. And these are kind of worldly ways of trying to bring an everlasting or a persevering peace. Government, laws, military, money. And maybe more on a practical level, sometimes when we look at the way the world gives, we think, well, they give medication. We'll help you be peaceful. We will dope you up so you don't know what's going on, right? We're going to give you so much good stuff, they call it, you know, and it's going to be this medication. Or we'll give you a vacation. Medication didn't work, we'll give you both. A vacation and a medication. Now you're really... Won't know what's going on, right? And we're going to add to that this. We're going to give you uh, meditation. So just think about these wonderful things. Hum, la, 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 whatever, you know, like, no, it doesn't work because now I'm thinking all the more about all these things that didn't do anything, right? Like, it, we try all these different things, and if all that doesn't work, fine. Isolation. Shove them all back in their houses, right? They're, the world can't solve this. Do you hear me? They can't solve it. We can't solve it. These things are not a complete, remember our word shalom, completeness, wholeness, back to the way we were created. These can't solve it. And that's what Jesus is saying. I'm not giving to you the way the world gives in that for a season you'll have peace. Because for a time all these things can bring some level of peace. The Bible even says sin for a season is pleasant. And then it takes you out. So all these things to some degree can bring peace. That's not the kind of peace I'm talking about today. I'm talking about a peace that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Everlasting peace, never any peace. Now I read this quote and I thought this really helps. That worldly peace is temporal. God's peace is eternal. And the author says the peace that Jesus gives comes to us through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. We've talked about that. To give us the wisdom, the protection, the power to accomplish God's will. That's that purposeful part. This peace does not depend on our circumstances. It depends on, look at this, God's nature and character. It depends on God's promises to us. God's promise to meet, look at this, all of our needs according to the glorious riches that are ours. Through who? Christ Jesus. Folks, when he was on the cross and said, it is finished, your peace was purchased. Your peace was purchased. Done deal. Signed, delivered, done that's the peace that we can lean into today. Well, pastor, does that mean every day I'm never going to have another anxious thought? No, unfortunately, we're still in a season that one day we, you know, you're going to have up days, down days, good days, bad days, all the rest of that snow, no snow. It's all going to happen. One day we'll see the complete fulfillment of that. But here's the beauty that we get to live in the truth of this as much as we press in, remember him, pursue him, let him pursue us. We can see the promises of God. We can see the blessing of God, the peace of God be ours in Him. Where are you today? You see yourself in a place of going, I need a partner with Him. Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. Maybe you're watching this online. You've never accepted the great gift of Christmas, Jesus Christ. You've never said, I believe that Jesus is the answer. He's the peace I've been looking for. Well, I encourage you today would be the day to say yes, partner with Him. And it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. You are God's son. You came, you lived, you died. You're coming again. Forgive me. I'm your son or daughter. I, I, I want to be yours. The Bible says in that moment, peace is then given to you. You are transformed and changed. You've gone from a kingdom of darkness to a kingdom of light. 
And this is part of that process. Then are you pursuing him? Have you forgotten about him? Have you, is your Bible a little dusty off to the side? Have you maybe disconnected from church family and you're not really pursuing him? And you're wondering, why don't I have any peace? Because he's still pursuing you. But the word of God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. See, God's a gentleman. And if you want to pull yourself away and be distant like a prodigal, then he'll allow you to do that. But I encourage you, begin to pursue him because he's a God who's pursuing you. You might be a day to reconnect. How about peace in your life? Is it productive? Are other people sensing peace? Or when you come, are you the one that they're like, oh boy, let the drama start. Here we go. Yeah, we always had this, well, not always, we had a friend for a while that whenever they showed up, another friend of mine would say, pack your bag, we're going on a guilt trip. And I'd be like, what? And then sure enough, I got to know the friend. I was like, I see what he means. Every time this person would show up, we were all being blamed for something. We were all going on a guilt trip. And I thought, after a while, you just go, pack your bag, get your bag, pack your bag. <laughs> I, show up. I hope people aren't saying that, you know, as you and I are approaching. I hope they're saying, they're asking, where is so-and-so? If they're not here, it's, it's not the same. But when they're here, it's a little, a little different. What is that, right? That should be the reality. That should be what we're able to bring. And that comes through leaning into him. Right? Making him, letting him make his home in us. And then finally, uh, understand today, wherever you're at, that this peace, you are his. And forever you will be his. And it is an eternal peace. You know, one day the reality is Jesus will come again, reign on this earth, and rule on this earth. And there will be peace. And that's amazing for me to think about. I can't fathom it. I can't get it. I, I think about it and look at the world and think, boy, we need that. We really need that. One day that reality will be here. We celebrate his first advent as he came as a baby. There will be a second advent where he comes and sets our world right. Righteously right. Would you stand with me? I want to pray with you this morning before we go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Prince of Peace. Jesus, you are that. You came, you lived, you died, uh, you went to, and are coming again for us to bring peace fully. But right now we live in a season where we can lean into you for peace. We can look to you for peace. And you say it is, it's something that you will give. It's something that you will give to us, a peace that will pass all understanding that has been purchased for us. And so today I pray all of us would unwrap that. And it's found in your presence. It's found in your very presence in our lives. And so may we cultivate that. May we begin to pursue again you if we have gotten off track. May we uh, look to you for uh, the answers that we need in our life. And may we know that you are always there to guide us in our next steps, to be purposeful, um, to persevere in the things you're calling us to. We thank you for that. And I pray specifically for those today who may be struggling with anxiety or worry about the holidays, maybe something specific that is creating a lot of anxiety. I pray this message specifically would minister to them that this very week, this very day, they would find as they, as they call out to you that you are right there, as close as the mention of your name, bringing peace to the situations in our life and to our very souls. We thank you for it. We pray in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for coming today. Go in peace and have an incredible week. And let us all uh, see how we can be used for God by, by him. God bless you. Thanks for joining today. Blessings.